People who have gone out for a pack of cigarettes and never went back to your family, what happened after you left? Serious. Just failed out of college. Moved back in with my dad. Things weren't going real well between us. I was depressed and not really going anywhere. I was angry at my dad because he came down on me so hard, but I was mostly angry at myself, and his attitude toward me just kind of compounded it all. Anyway, one day after being out at a friend's house and hanging out all over the city for a couple days, I finally came home, and things around my house were just tense, and I felt like nothing and like I would never get out from under this, wait. So I just started packing some stuff. As I was leaving I remember I was coming out of my room with a bag. This wasn't unusual because I would often take a bag with me when I'd be gone to a friend's house. But today, my dad was standing at the top of the steps just looking down at me. I remember very vividly, him standing there with his hands in his pockets, kind of looking at me, then looking away, and he quietly just asked. Where you going son? I just looked up like everything was normal, and just said, I'm going to so and so's house. He nodded slowly, when ya come in back? I shrugged slowly, I don't know dad. Somehow he knew. I could feel it. I never came back home. Days turned into weeks and months, and then years. I could tell he knew. It makes me so sad now when I think of it. Like I tore his heart in two. He has never been a very expressive man, but I could just tell how sad he was. I needed this though. I needed to go off on my own and suffer the real world and grow up some. It still hurts my heart to think about him slowly nodding after I told him. I don't know dad. I was 10 years old when my mom and dad split up. We had been expecting it, but I didn't know that my mom had packed up suitcases for herself, my sister, and I. One day we went to school like everything was normal, and went to my mom's parents after school. It wasn't unusual for us to have dinner there. But then mom sat us down and told us we'd be staying there for a while. Ended up being 6 years before we got our own place. I never got to go back to my bedroom again. My dad got remarried, and his wife's daughter moved in and repainted my room. When I had to visit them I slept on the couch while she slept in my room. I was living with a very mean and controlling girlfriend. If it wasn't her way or all about her, she threw a fit. One day I had enough and said I was going to the store, and just kept driving. I literally drove for 12 hours and showed up at a friend's house 5 states away and asked if I could crash on his couch. I called my boss and said I wanted to quit work. He was pretty cool about it, he knew my girlfriend, and actually set me up with a job in my new city. I have never spoken to my ex since. Soon after my relocation I met my, now wife, and I could not be in a better relationship. Best thing I ever did. When I was 18. I moved out from my abusive father. I was commuting to college at the time, and I had morning classes, so the night before I packed my car with as much of my stuff as I could, and set off. One of my professors that I regularly talked to after class noticed that my car was full of clothes, and asked if everything was okay. Over lunch I explained my situation, and he offered to take me in. I had already made arrangements to live with my mother. After my classes for the day were over, I went home for the first time since I was a child to live with my mother. I slept on the couch for months before getting my own bed, and we didn't always have the money to eat, but we made it work. I have seen my father one time since then, because he swore to me that he had changed. That night he proceeded to get wasted and tried to put his hands on me. I haven't seen him since, and I have no regrets. Lived in an abusive house with my mom. Got a job after college, and in 3 months rented an apartment and went home. Took a garbage bag full of clothes and booked it. She didn't want me leaving because she was taking all of my money. She would take my car when I didn't pay her my full paycheck. I had to resort to pulling fuses when I parked, because she would hide my car on different streets trying to get me fired. Even in college I had finals to graduate, and took my car, and I had no way to get there had to rent a car just to take my finals. God, the stories I could tell. Anyway, waddled in the apartment with my garbage bag and nothing else, slept on the floor, and for the first time felt peace. Now have a decent job, house, wife and a kid. 
I didn't go out for cigarettes, but I pulled a similar stunt. My mom is abusive and I had no spine, so I told her I was going to move in with my dad for the summer. I said I would be back before the end of August. After I moved in with my dad I got my state ID. My mom didn't want me to have any kind of ID, and I finally got my driver's permit a few weeks later. I felt bad for lying at the time, but now I'll know if I didn't lie to her I would have never gotten out of there. I would be stuck living on a shitty little hobby farm with a woman who did everything in her power to tear me down and hurt me. Throw away for good reason. I've always lived in an abusive home, both mentally and physically, and never saw a proper way out. I started working at 14 years old in a convenience store for $8 an hour, and hid all of the money I made in a locked container in a nearby wooded park area. I did this because my parents would have taken my money if they knew I was working at all. By the time I turned 18, I had close to 10,000 saved up, and had finished high school. I was supposed to start university that year, but early on in the summer I waited until my parents went out to work, found and took all of my documents, unenrolled out of the university program I was supposed to be in, and left. I took a bus to Alberta, and I've been living here since, doing labor, it's been a year and a half, and they haven't searched for me yet. Not that I'm aware of at least. How is my life now? I'm poor, barely getting by but at least I'm living alone and happier than I was before. This is my throwaway. Got married right out of high school, everything was going well, but we were young and both were our first partners. Came home early one day and walked in on my wife with another man. Standard insanity ensued, followed by her begging for forgiveness, and we went to months of counseling. Everything seemed well and dandy, she seemed like a totally different woman, and couldn't live without me. One day I log into our desktop PC and her Facebook is loaded, and there are multiple messages, and I had to look. I found exactly what I knew I would find. It crushed me, but I acted like nothing happened. That weekend I packed up my favorite clothes and belongings that meant a lot to me, and snuck them to the car. Sunday evening I said, hey I'm going to take the dogs to the dog park and hike for a few hours. When I left, I texted our neighbor to see if anyone showed up at the house. She replied pretty quickly that a male visitor was by very quickly, I told her goodbye, and the dogs and I just drove. I had a decent savings and thought, duck it, start off somewhere new, and that is what I did. My ex-wife didn't even try and contact me until around lunchtime the next day. When I didn't respond, she blew me up with photos and videos of her with multiple men, and about how bad of a lover I was. It ducked me up, but I just kept trucking. I ended up in a smaller town where I saw someone was hiring for my trade. Years later, I remarried to the best human ever. I went home not long ago, and my mom posted a picture of us at a gathering. My ex hit up my Facebook and asked if we could meet for a cup of coffee, she would like some closure, I obviously would like as well. I have to say, for all the resentment and hatred I had toward this woman, our conversation was pleasant, and I felt better after we talked. She understood why I left, she apologized deeply, many times, and didn't try to blame me for anything. After an hour and a little bit of tears, awkward as hell in public, ha ha ha. She asked if it was okay to get a hug. We hugged and said our goodbyes. Once I got home I told my wife about the visit, and she got awkward for a few minutes. She left the room and I didn't follow, I thought, oh, I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. Five minutes later, she came back crying, and just gave me the biggest hug ever, she told me she forgot what I went through, and she was sorry and glad our life is good. Closing. I left a terrible human for the best human ever. I was living with my parents. I was 17. They told me to leave, then tried to stop me from leaving. I have been in an abusive relationship with my mom and my stepdad for years. Friends helped me load the car, that was 12 years ago. Never been back. I still regret not being able to say goodbye to my sister 12 years ago. I said goodbye to my brother and my mom but I was the only one who knew I would never come back. I moved 300 miles away. I have seen my brother and my mom twice since then. 
I haven't seen my sister since I put her down for her nap that day, before I knew I was leaving. After I left my mom got married. My sister went to live with her grandparents. My brother chose to be homeless rather than let our mom drag him around different cities in the middle of a school year. I was able to finish school, which wouldn't have happened if I stayed. I stopped trying to accidentally walk in front of traffic or overdose on my prescriptions. Started eating food. Got basically blackmailed into seeing my mom after 6 years, while my ex pretended we were together. I finally found a family that actually liked me. Met my boyfriend. Friends for 8 years. Together for 4. Got my own cat. Have my own apartment with bills paid early. Overall it has been great in between my mom popping into my life. I left my home like this. One night, I just packed the essentials into my backpack, walked to a train station and got on a train to Newport News, Virginia, from Pasco, Washington. No one knew I was gone until 3 o'clock the next morning. It was to be with a girl my family was totally, 100% against. That was a year ago, it's all working perfectly. I am happier now than I ever have been before. When I was 16, I moved out without telling my stepdad, but my mom was in on it. And I just moved in with my grandparents. I left on a Friday. Got all my stuff and just two trips. I was told he didn't even notice I was gone the first weekend. He was pretty mad once he figured it out, but it was almostly a non-event. Everything turned out okay for me. It will have been 21 years this September. Kinda late, but I'll share my story. I grew up in foster care, and all the homes I lived in either were abusive or run in a business, collecting cash to house kids, format. My actual mom was a very heavy drinker, and was abusive, hence being in foster care. As an adult, we had a very good relationship. She was proud of me, impressed with my work ethic and amazed that I got a fully paid for education via scholarships at the state university. Everything was going swimmingly until I started to do better than my immediate family. They started to think I had abandoned them, and that I was too good for them once I started pursuing my education. The last conversation I had with my mother and sisters occurred on Thanksgiving 2011, when I drove 3 hours to sit down and have our first legitimate family dinner in several years. I showed up. My mom was drunk, and my sisters were incoherently intoxicated on narcotics. My sisters yelled at me for abandoning the family, and called me unforgivable things. My mother said to me, I hope you achieve all of your dreams, lord knows you've abandoned ours. I got up from the dinner and left. I spent the entire drive back home, for 3 hours, hysterically sobbing. I haven't talked with them since. I know it was bitterness, and the drugs talking but it really shattered me to the core. My mother passed away this last year, that dinner was the last time I ever saw her or spoke with her. Both of my sisters were incarcerated at the time, so I flew home to clear out her estate. She didn't have anything but a mountain of bills, and a house full of items to sort through. I donated almost all of it to Goodwill. While sifting through her belongings, I did find a lockbox though. The lockbox contained her wedding ring from my late father, and some photos of my sisters and I as kids. Perfectly preserved. It also had a single note inside, which was addressed to all three of us, with corresponding paragraphs dedicated to us. My paragraph said, Daniel, words cannot describe how sorry I am for how much I have hurt you. It has eaten at me every day for the last 10 years. I drink because I wish I could have been the mother you deserved. You are the strongest man I have ever met. I'm sorry. You deserve so much more than I gave you. I love you with all my heart. I hope someday you can forgive me. Mom. It destroys me inside to know that mom died thinking that she didn't mean the world to me. If I'm being honest, I started drinking very heavily after she passed. She died thinking I didn't love her with all my heart. I carry her driver's license in my wallet, above mine so that every time I take it out I get to see her, but more importantly, so that she can see me and know that I'm always right here. Anyway, that's my story, Reddit. Thanks for reading. Didn't leave my wife and kids, as I don't have any, but I did walk out on my mother and siblings without any notice. Dad was not in the picture. After? 
best decision of my life. My mother refuses treatment for her very serious mental illness, or illnesses, and was incredibly abusive, physically as well, and neglectful while I was growing up. I saw the affect it had burn out older siblings, with no motive or drive, and instead embraced the crazy just to feel sane in the toxic family home we lived in. I was homeless for about a year and a half, living out of a duffel and bumming food from friends. I feel like my life hasn't even started until I left it behind. I feel like it held me back for 17 years, and I now am finally being able to find out who I am. Mom never came looking for me, I reconnected with my estranged father, whom I learned was in the military from the moment he was 18, until he was HD at 43. He has severe PTSD from his three tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's now getting his masters in outdoors leadership, which I believe is a perfect way to use his massive skill set. I don't see him much, if ever, but at least I know some blood is still thicker than water.